Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monaco for Catron vs. The World. And it's the second pole position of the season for the Toro Rosso driver Kvyat. And, well, overtaking is very difficult around the streets of Monaco, so that's exactly where he wants to be. You'll note there that for the first time this season we're not 22nd on the grid, despite retiring from qualifying. We retired from qualifying instantly, yet Button and Hamilton did not set lap times either, and Trickshot received a 10th place grid penalty. So that promoted us to 19th place, our highest start of the season, and we've instantly converted that into a pretty good start, somehow avoiding the back of several cars, breaking very early into St. Devot, and Ricardo is being overtaken by Bianchi there. Not every day you see that, we're going up the inside here, not going to wall ride around the outside as Whoa, what has happened there? Is that it's green end plate? That's a trick shot. How the hell did he get there? Oh dear, we've completely failed to remember where the braking marker is. And we get a penalty very deservedly there. Yeah, as I was saying, it was the first lap I've done in Monaco for quite a while, so I've completely forgotten my braking points. Quite dangerous thing to be <laughs> forgetting your braking points around Monaco, but you know, at least we're making some progress through the field. Oh, what a move there and uh, Maldonado, Los Hepin, the place you usually go for a dive. We did grab a piece of the wall though, so not the cleanest of overtakes, as neither is this. We get into the back of the Sauber there. But we need to make headway very quickly because that penalty is going to be a 10 second lead to take the victory, the first victory of the season. And could this be a move around the outside of Lowe's for the lead? Yes, cop that, Fiat. What a fantastic. Are you serious? A penalty. Causing a glitch. No, I'm so done. 20 seconds of penalties now, but we have a 9 second lead 4 laps later, so it's possible, just possible, that we could e eke out a 20 second lead uh, should we make no mistakes for the rest of the race. We pit halfway through and it's 15.6 on lap 13, so definitely possible, 20 seconds. Now it's not definitely possible because a safety car is going to neutralise the field and bring everyone right back up to me. D disaster! Could come last with 20 seconds of penalties. Needless to say, the option tyre is what goes on. And oh, I thought I had a big enough lead to retain, but no, Satil is in the lead now. As the green flag flies, the restart with six laps to go, and there's a big gap behind. I mean, how is that corner cut in that one? It was like, I was perfectly on the curb. Anyhow, Satil is on the prime tyre. Using the prime tower so we have a huge advantage in cornering grips. So we're around the outside there and into the lead. And let's see how much of a gap we can create. That's a freeze frame of me not cutting turn one, so okay, whatever. It's actually five seconds pretty much at the end of that lap, so the possibility remains, and especially as it's 17 seconds at the first sector of the last lap, please I just need three more seconds and I am actually catching the rear of the field, lapping people. Surely they haven't slowed me down. And I've done it! Yes! Caterham's first win. First win of the series, and what a place to get it. Unfortunately, Trickshot was disqualified. But Caterham has returned. Or <laughs> returned? <laughs> we were never at the top. We've reached the top. And it's jubilation for the team. And that's done wonders for our championship, I've got to say. Because we're now up into P2, just five points adrift of Chilton, with Vettel right with us as well. Trickshot, 21st, at least he has points from Spain, and the team has moved up to fourth. Next round is Canada, where I know Trickshot's quite strong, so I look forward to that. I've been Jacko, see you then.